Hi everyone. In this video, I will show you how to measure inductance using a multimeter and a single generator. First, we will build a very simple test circuit, and then we will do some measurements across our circuit with our multimeter, and then we will pop in all the details into a software tool, which will do the maths for us and calculate the inductance. So the multimeter I have here is a Bryman BM786 True RMS digital multimeter, and it can do pretty accurate AC readings in the millivolts level. You can use any multimeter that you want, but the, the precision of this method depends on the precision of your uh, multimeter with AC signals in the millivolts level. And on the signal generator front, I have a USB scope, a bit scope micro uh, USB here, which has an arbitrary waveform generator. And uh, all we need from the signal generator is a one volt peak to peak 10 kilohertz sine wave. So as long as you have anything that can generate a sine wave at one volt, uh, at about at around 10 kilohertz, that's good enough. You can build your own um, signal generator. It's a good beginner's electronics project as well. Um, or you can use something cheap off the shelf. Another option is you can use square waves from your micros or other sources as well. But um, there is no precision with square waves. It's just a, but you can get a ballpark figure using uh, high frequency square waves. If you go higher than 20 kilohertz or so, your multimeter will probably start losing its accuracy. So it's a bit of a trade-off. If you absolutely have no way of generating sine waves, yeah, you can just also use square waves as well. And I have a few test inductors here and um, really in the component front, we don't have much, just a, just a resistor. Oh, look at this guy. It's just trying to be friends with the inductors. Come on. Okay, now um, let's build our circuit. Uh, we have this software tool, which I talked about earlier. And um, uh, this is something that I put together with JavaScript quickly. You don't need to install anything. I'll just link it down in the video description below. And I just put the schematic in here too. We have a resistor in series with our um, signal generator. The resistor I have here is 150 ohms. You can use anything uh, between 100 ohms and 1K. Um, so you don't want to go lower than 100 ohms because this is also a current limiting resistor. We don't want to pull too much current out of our signal generator. And uh, you don't want to go too high because then the, the current will be so small that we won't be able to measure any voltage drops across our uh, inductors and resistor. So yeah, it's like 100 ohms, 150 ohms is a good value to start. I'm just going to pop it on our breadboard as well. And the next thing is our inductor, which I have a bunch of test inductors here. I will take one of the mid-level ones. This is a 10 micro Henry inductor, and I'm just going to put it in there and connect it to ground. I haven't connected our signal generator yet, but I just connect the ground of our signal generator. And this is the... Um, yeah, this is our signal generator, which I haven't connected yet. And next we have the diodes in parallel to our inductor. And in this case, I will be using LEDs. They are good enough for the job. These are for protection. If we mess something up and if our um, inductor has a chance to, to induce a spike voltage, uh, the spike voltage will be reduced by these LEDs instead of going and destroying something else on its path. So you can use uh, diodes as well, but LEDs are good enough for this job and they're pretty common. So there's nothing special about these LEDs. They have a forward voltage drop of uh, 1.5 volts, so they won't be clamping our signal as well. I'm just going to forward bias one of them and the other one will be reverse biased. All right. Now, before popping our signal generator in there, we will first want to measure our resistor. I know that this resistor is 150 ohms, but I want to get a more accurate read on it. Okay, it's 149.84. And I will just pop that in into R2. So now I know the actual value of our resistor. I can just pop in my signal generator there as well. As I told you before, this is a 10 kilohertz. We have a 10 kilohertz, one volt peak to peak sine wave here. Now I want to measure the voltage across our resistor. 
So to do that, uh, my multimeter is already in AC millivolts mode, but this is like you can change it. Yeah, just to make sure it's in AC millivolts range. Okay, now I'm going to measure the voltage across our resistor. It is 81.33. It's 81.33 and we should also pop in the frequency which is 10 kilohertz in hertz and now we will measure the voltage across our inductor so i'm gonna go in there and make sure that it stops and the reading is stable 0 0.34 yeah 0 0.34 and voila we have 9.97 micro henrys and this is well within the tolerances of this inductor it's a 10 micro henry inductor with a 10 percent tolerance so this is a pretty good reading now let's try something even smaller because as you get smaller things get a little bit more challenging you have a unfortunately this is the smallest i have i can perhaps like i can probably wind the smaller one but uh this is a 4.7 micro henry inductor and it's good enough for these purposes. I'm just going to pop it in there and repeat the measure once again, just to measure the voltage across our resistor, which is 81.34 this time. Not much of a difference, but I want to put these numbers as correct as we can. And now let's measure the voltages across our inductor which is 0 0.15 millivolts. And yeah, that gives us exactly 4.4 4, uh, micro Henry uh, inductance in this inductor. It's 4.7, but this is has this has like 20% tolerance. So it's well within the tolerances of the component. Now let's try something uh, a little bit different, a different type of inductor. This one I have is a hundred uh, micro henrys with a 10% tolerance. As far as I can understand from the colors, it's uh, uh, silver, brown, black, brown. And this is like a hundred, it has to be a hundred uh, micro henrys. Let's pop it in there. Okay, and we will do the same measurements again. And let's go for our resistor first 81.13 just going to pop it in there and let's measure the voltage across our inductor 2.98 millivolts let's pop it in there 2.98 so there we go it's 87.60 micro henrys well, it's not within the spec of the uh, inductor, but um, it's close enough. Uh, it could be like 90 micro henrys. It's supposed to be 100 micro henrys, but it's pretty close enough. Now let's do a, let's experiment with something. Let's try it with a different uh, frequency. I'll just go to my signal generator and change the frequency from 10 kilohertz to five kilohertz. I'll change the frequency to five kilohertz. And we have to measure the voltages again between the resistor first, 82.35. And the next one is our inductor. We have 1.68. Yeah, this time we have a bit of a closer value at 97.30 uh, micro henrys, which is very close to 100 micro henrys. It's generally a good idea to use uh, higher frequencies with uh, smaller inductors and lower frequencies with larger inductors. That would give you better ranges and um, if you are not sure just try like 5 kilohertz and 10 kilohertz that's basically what lcr meters does as well they just try a couple of different uh 
frequencies to get the, the best um, calculations for the device under test. So this is what we can do here as well. Now let's try something else. We are still at uh, 5 kilohertz and let's measure a different inductor this time, which is a hand wound uh, beast that I did, I don't know, maybe years ago. I don't remember. Uh, let's give this one a try. It's a little bit tricky to pop it onto the breadboard. Uh, well, let's, let's try it. Okay, yeah, it seems to be there. Now let's measure the voltage across the resistor first. 81.97 and the voltage across our inductor 30.15 yeah so this is uh i knew this was 1.8 millihenries it's uh, measured as 1.75 millihenries that's pretty good that's a big one and we are measuring it properly so that's pretty much all to it. I will link the software tool down in the video description below as well. It doesn't need any installation or anything like that. It's just a web page. You open it, do your measurements, pop the values in. Once you're done with it, you close it, it's gone. And that's pretty much all to it. Let me know if you have any suggestions or problems with the tool or the method or the circuit. I'll be happy to reply. And uh, thanks for watching my video. See you next time.